Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Red Wolf Roundtable. I'm your host, Brad Brewer, and alongside me today is a returning Alex Galbraith, back for a second time. And we have another new face to the show, Bailey Carter. So thank you guys for joining us today, and thank you, the audience, for joining us today. And today's topics aren't necessarily as uplifting as last week's show, primarily because, unlike a couple weeks ago where all of our teams won, this past week, it seems like every A-State team lost. And so we're going to start off the show with Alex talking about some soccer. Yeah, last Friday, the Red Wolf soccer team looked to improve upon their 2-0 conference start on the road against Louisiana, but instead suffered their first loss with a 1-0 scoreline with the Raging Cajuns' Julian DeBlow scoring the only goal of the contest at 66 minutes. Things didn't get better for the Red Wolves on Sunday as they fell to Texas State 2-1 with their lone goal scored by Taylor Schneider. The soccer squad looks to rebound tomorrow night at home against South Alabama. And now to Bailey with volleyball. The Red Wolves vo volleyball team found similar struggles on the road the, this past weekend, coming in with a 2-0 and zero conference record and left the weekend with their first two conference losses of the season. The squad initially fell in five sets to Texas Arlington in what was nothing short of a heartbreaker. Losing to the fifth set, 15-13, to 13, the weekend didn't improve as the Red Wolves had to face last year's conference runner-up, Texas State, on Sunday, where they were ultimately swept. The road ahead provides even more challenges for the team as they are set to travel to take on defending conference champions Coastal Carolina this Friday. All right, thanks, guys. So, yeah, we just heard some struggles from both our soccer team and our volleyball team this past uh, weekend. And uh, we'll start with a little bit of soccer. Um, and it was very, I mean, soccer is a scoreless sport, but it just feels like our, the offense really wasn't that in either game. Uh, Texas, they ended up tying the game, uh, Arkansas State on Sunday, but then Texas State managed to score the second goal late and pull A and get that win. Uh, so now they're 2-2 two and two in the conference. And then now on volleyball, they're also 2-2 two and two in the conference. So let's take a look at that Friday game real quick. Um, it was against yeah, Texas Arlington. And it was, I feel like it's a game that Arkansas State should have won. Um, because, like you said, 15-13 to 13 the fifth set. And the fifth set's almost kind of like an overtime. And so, what do you think? Do you think for because Texas State, we'll talk about them later, but they're a really good team, like we said, like they're they finished second place last year. And so, Alex, I'll talk to you first about this. Do you think it you we should really read in too much in this Texas Arlington game? I don't think so. I think any time in, in any sport, yeah, you're you're bound to slip up at some point. You know, if you look at uh, you said you know Texas State was the team that was the runner up in the conference, uh, and that's an understandable loss there. But when you when you fall to a team that you know you think that you're better than. Um, I think that just is a bigger fuel for you to get better and try to bounce back a little bit. So you can't read too much into it. Volleyball is an extremely long season. You know, you've got a lot of games in, the, in, this, uh, in this long season in the Sun Belt play. So you're 2-2. Two and two, You bounce back after a rough loss. So I don't think this is something that we can worry about too much. If it continues down the road, especially with teams that we are uh, superior to, uh, then I think we'll have a little bit of a problem. But I, I'm not too worried about it right now. Okay, yeah. And I 100% agree with you. Um, and like we've talked to the players before, and they've said that this is a young team. You know, uh, we've seen their mental strength in games like against South Alabama, where they reverse swept them. But then again, when you're on the road, everything's a little bit tougher. And so there's that. And yeah, they're gonna. They lost against Texas State. They got swept, um, which there were two, there were a couple of close sets in there. Um, so it, there's a little bit of uh, there's some positives to definitely take away from the weekend. Um, but yeah, let's take a look towards this Friday where they're going to be playing Coastal Carolina, who were the champions. They won the Sun Belt tournament last week when it was held, or last year when it was held at First National Bank Arena. And so, Bailey, I'll ask you more of a question on psychology. So, when you go into a game knowing that they're probably going to win, kind of with Texas State, do, do you, how do you approach that? How would you approach that game in terms of a mindset? And kind of getting out of that because if you lose how do you go on from that well I think you just can't um, keep the past in mind when you go into a game like that you kind of just have to have a new mindset and just even if you know like you're probably not going to win you still have to keep a mindset of this is your team and you're a Red Wolf um, player and you have to keep that pride as you go into that game and other games to come okay so let's take a look through the rest of the season for the volleyball team uh, this is it's unfortunate that they have to start their conference rec or their conference season other than those first two games with such tough opponents. You know, Texas State, Coastal Carolina, back to back essentially. Um, so that's going to be tough for them to overcome. But then they're going to be back home, I believe, next weekend, and they seem to really perform much better at home than on the road. 
so that's you know that's very invigorating to see. So maybe when Texas State comes to the first national bank, or maybe when Coastal Carolina comes, they may pull away with that game. Uh, and so taking a look at this, because um, last year Arkansas State finished third in the tournament. They finished right behind, or third, fourth. They finished behind Coastal Carolina and Texas State, respectively. So we talked a little bit of where we would with where we think this team can end up last week. Um, now that you guys were on the show last week, so I'm actually interested to hear your guys' opinions. Where do you think, Alex, um, first up, that this team can end up? Yeah, I think, like you said, last year was a very good year. And we talked, I think it was two weeks ago, we talked about some of the leaders on this volleyball team and how we had some strength in, in Carlisa May, obviously the star of this team. Uh, but there's also a lot of youth behind it. So I think having, uh, I feel like we have a very good balance of, of that seniority and youth on this team uh, that can potentially give us a run into the, into the Sun Belt Tournament, hopefully make a, the NCAA Tournament. You know, right now, uh, this volleyball team is 10-7. and seven, uh, But like you mentioned, we're 5-0 and oh at home. Uh, so if you've got to take care of business at home, if you steal a couple on the road, uh, this team uh, certainly has the potential to be something extremely special, especially with a lot of these seniors uh, playing their last year on the team. Yeah, and that's I, I agree, because this year I don't feel a championship in this team, which it's unfortunate to say because, I mean, Carlisa May, um, I would love for her to go out with the championship, but there is a youth movement, but I don't personally think it's there yet. Um, and but yeah, I, I see a lot more. I think this is the best team we've had in a long time, probably since we won the championship a few years back. Um, but it's just maybe next year or the year after. Um, so what about you, Bailey? So what, 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 what do you think? Um, I just I think that um, we, we do have a really great team. I know it's, some people would say it's not as great as last year's. But we just have to make a comeback. And even if we pick up a cu couple losses on the way, we can still get the victory and, and maybe make the championship and be better. Okay, yeah, it's going to be a tough road when we get to the tournament. But the tournament's still far away. There's still a lot to play for in this year. Um, that's the thing. I mean, just getting over these couple of losses, like you can't – it's it's all a mental game. At the, I, think, I think half the battle is your skill on the court, and then the other half of the battle is the mental side. And that's something they're up to overcome, and I think they'll do a fairly good job at that. Well, that's what we're going to talk about for this first segment, but make sure you stick around because in the next segment, we're going to talk about some A-State football. Uh, yeah. It's not my first time bartending, so. It's a sausage party in here. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm very familiar. Yeah, because you're a sexy girl, Sam. Last thing, totally last thing, Yeah. is that the music, when Momo kicks it into high gear, is going to get a little bit loud in here. Mm -hmm. So your customers are going to have a hard time hearing you. So you may want to. What? <laughs> so there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. I'm Ferdinand. You look at me and think big. You think scary, but I'm a little misunderstood. Sorry, I almost killed you. You've all been misunderstood. Not a fighter. Oh, I do understand that at all. Kids with learning and attention issues like dyslexia and ADHD are misunderstood too. Take the time to understand. Best class ever! With the right support, everyone can reach their full potential because you can't judge a bull by his cover. Learn more at understood.org. Hello, welcome back to Red Wolf Roundtable. We just got done talking about a rather unfortunate weekend for our soccer and volleyball squads. But now we're going to go to another team. Well, it was also an unfortunate weekend. We said this show wouldn't be as you know happy as last week, and the the staple team, the football team, they lost to in a game where I feel like uh, sure they were on the road, but this is a game where people you know we all expected them to go in Georgia Southern and beat them. Didn't happen that way. They lost 28 21. It was rather close. I mean, like we talked about for the show, Georgia Southern scored like 40 seconds before the game ended, and then you know forced a hail mary play where Justice Hansen got sacked at the end. Um, but let's take a look, look at these stats real quick. First off from A-State, let's highlight the A-State players. Justice Hansen, he went off as always. He, had, he went 38-50, and 50, 376 yards, and a touchdown. 
And that's a stark contrast to the leading rush that we're seeing. The leading rusher, Marshall Murray, with 10 rushes, 42 yards. Justice Hansen did get a running touchdown, but I didn't highlight him because, you know, he's only a running back. But he was the leading rusher. And so I thought Cam Newton, like, I don't know, like, right. you can't carry the team, you know, if you don't have any rushing game. So where, where do the faults lie for you when you watch that game? Well, like what you just said, um, the fact that we had to rely so much on Justice Hansen. You look at those stats, 50 pass attempts is, is something that you never really want out of your quarterback. You never want that many pass attempts out of him. Uh, so the fact that we had to – he is the star player, without a doubt, and the quarterback has to be the leader of this team. But you can't – you've got to have this balance between the running game and the passing game. We did not have that against Georgia Southern. And granted, Georgia Southern is a very talented team. I mean, honestly, as much as I did want Arkansas State to win this game, I, I had this gut feeling that we were going to go on the road and lose this game. Georgia Southern runs uh, a very dangerous offense, uh, the option – uh, their quarterback and Shy Words. I know we're going to talk about him in a yeah. second, but he uh, he's very dominant. He he can do a little bit of what Justice Hansen does, but maybe uh, is in a, in a different system. He's very skilled through the air, but even better on the ground. Uh, and so our defense definitely has to step up there. We, we mentioned they scored that game-winning touchdown with uh, 19 seconds left. Uh, so we could have sent the game into overtime. Who knows what would have happened? But the defense has to start stepping up a little bit, and we've got to take that pressure off of Justice Hansen, especially with uh, the bulk of Sunbelt play coming up here in a few weeks. Yeah, and. It, it is like I was kind of because that touchdown was about like 40 yards, right? Yeah. It was from midfield, so they it just kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, I was personally listening on the radio because uh, me and the Life in the Pack show on Twitter, we had a little bit of banter. It's like, you know, five bucks isn't worth for ESPN Plus. <laughs> it probably is. I may invest in that in the future. But what I really liked um, before we go on to talk about the Georgia Southern team, I'm going to stick with A State because uh, Blake Anderson, he went to, I believe it's the Little Rock Football Club this Monday. Um, he, he went there and talked about the game, and I remember his quote saying, you know, we lost the game, we didn't lose the program. And so, Bailey, I want to talk to you about having a coach where, like, he is, I feel like he, even though they lost, nothing happened in his mind. Because, you know, sometimes a loss, you know, you get down, of course, but, like, it just seems like he's just, whatever, we're going to move on, fix our mistakes. And so, I'll ask you, what, what does that make, what, how, what kind of impact does that make for the players when you have a coach who is completely behind you? And even though, you know, you slip up and you lose a game, you maybe shouldn't have lost that you still have that coach behind you. I think that's very important. Um, Coach Anderson and Coach um, Trooper Taylor are both great coaches, and I think they just really need to work on defense because we're having a lot of problems with our defense and our safety lately. And I think that if we can just make a comeback from that and they're, all the players just know that their coach is behind them, and that is just a great feeling. Yeah, definitely. So I, even though they lost this game, I'm not really too worried about it. Um, I don't think I – th I think this is still a season where A-State can go on to win the conference championship. Um, but let's, let's give some props to Georgia Southern. Um, and it frustrates me to read these stats, but at the same time, it frustrates me because it works. And if anything works, you got to do it. So Shy Works, we are just talking about Georgia Southern's quarterback. He has three pass attempts. Three. Right. That infuriates me. That almost infuriates me as much as Ryan Tannehill scoring me zero fantasy points. Right. Well, well, we'll talk about that next time. Sorry, I was just, you know, fantasy football. I can't get it out of my head. But, yeah, one of three, 61 yards, and a touchdown. So that's a three passes, a touchdown. So I guess that's good. But um, on the rush, Shy Works led the team in rushing, essentially, at 22 rushes, 113 yards, and a touchdown. Um, and then if we keep talking about the rest of the running backs, can we talk about this option game that they played? Uh, Wesley Kennedy III had eight rushes, 105 yards, and a touchdown. And then Wesley Fields almost, because they had nearly had three players who had 100-plus yards in rushing. Wesley Fields had 10 rushes, 98 yards. So three people who rushed that effectively, I've never seen an option game be this effective. Yeah, I mean, Georgia Southern, if you look at the uh, look at their offense, it's very similar to what Army runs. You run that, that option, uh, and you know what's, you know what's going to come. Georgia Southern, they've been running this game for years now. They've been running this type of offense for years. Same with Army and, and a lot of the military uh, schools, and yet you just, the defenses can't figure out how to stop them. Uh, they're not a pass-heavy team. That's why that th those three pass attempts are so frustrating, because you would think running it on the, on the ground, you would be able to stop them uh, enough and force them through the air, which is probably their weakness. Um, but, George, you know, Georgia Southern, uh, they had a horrible year last year, I think going just 2-10. Uh, so the way they bounced back, beating probably the heavy favor in the Sun Belt with Arkansas State, that's a huge break for them. you got to give them a lot of credit. Uh, probably a game they shouldn't have won uh, had we, our guys stepped up a little bit more. But uh, you got a lot of credit. And, and like we mentioned uh, with soccer and volleyball, they had home field advantage, which uh, in any sport uh, can play a major role. Yeah, definitely. And so, like, I feel like every time we talk about one of the teams in the past segment, we've talked about how it's not going to get any easier. And once again, I feel like we're going to say this for this football team because next Tuesday we're playing Appalachian State, who are defending Sub-Belt champions. And so, but it's at home. We have that going That's for true. us. We do have it at home. 
Um, but Appalachian State absolutely have been crushing it this year. The numbers they have been putting up are scary. And you talked about the defense, and I agree with you. I think the defense is the number one problem for our team right now. I think we'd all agree. Um, when you can't shut down a rushing with no passing, there's some definite problems and you can't handle a two-dimensional offense. So let's talk about – so wh what are we doing right? What, what kind of game do we need to play to beat Appalachian State next Tuesday? I think we just really, we really do need to work on our defense. As I said before, we have a pretty, we have a pretty great um, offense, but we just really need to work on our defense. And I think that that'll just take the coaches working with them one on one and as a team to work together and have teamwork at this next game next Tuesday. Okay. And what about you, Alex? Yeah. Well, like you mentioned, the numbers for Appalachian State are extremely scary. They're averaging 51.8 points per game. <laughs> yeah. That that's very concerning for for our lack of defense that we're showing. It's a good point. Uh, like you said, we do have it at home. It is in the middle of the week on Tuesday night. Uh, and sometimes coming off a short week for some, some teams, that is um, you know, a benefit for us in a way uh, to have that there in the middle of the week and hopefully we'll have a good crowd out there. But this game is shaping up, in my opinion, to be a big shootout. You're putting two very solid quarterbacks with Justice Hansen and Appalachian State's Zach Thomas, who's almost thrown for already 1,000 yards this season, almost led the upstate, uh, upset over Penn State in the season Definitely, opener. Yeah. Uh, which is what everybody relates to Appalachian State to. They're upset over uh, Michigan back in 2007. Neely beat Tennessee two years ago. Uh, Penn State uh, in this year's season opener. So they're prone uh, to playing extremely well in big games, games that they're not expected to win. Uh, but the football power index is giving them a 76.9% chance to win this game. I mean, it's very, very high. I, I disagree with that. Okay. I think with the, with the home field advantage that we have and the offense that we have, I think Coach Anderson's going to have this team ready because this is a game that if you lose, uh, we're going to have to really uh, have some help if we want to try to make the Sun Belt Championship game. Yeah, and I, I kind of disagree with you on the point where it's a bit too high. I think it's kind of where it needs to be. I definitely think um, – I don't want to say I'm completely disheartened by this A-State team, but I'm more just, like, scared by this Appalachian sure, State yeah. team. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, we have the scores right here. Because South Alabama – I mean, of course, you know, the teams change over the year. But I remember last year, South Alabama was a team that really spoiled our chances to go, like, to win the Sun Belt Championship. And Appalachian State, 52 to 10. Yeah. And then we talk about that Penn State game. And, like, every – it seems – so A-State had, you know, a couple attempts to pull off upsets. Didn't really work out. Um, I mean, of course, when you play Al – Al Penn, Penn State's definitely easier than, like, Alabama. So you can't really use the transitive property there. But when you can play against these big-time teams, especially in the Big Ten, and, like, do it so well, I don't know. I, I, I – I'm kind of I'm pessimistic. I, I'm pessimistic. I think this App State team is too good, and I have them early as a lock to win the Sun Belt Championship. So Bailey, what do you think? Do you think there's hope for the Red Wolves in Tuesday? I think there is hope for the Red Wolves. I think we we just really need to get everything together, and we we have had only two losses this season, and I think we can make it farther in the Sun Belt Conference if we just work on everything that needs to be worked on with the defense, especially. Okay, and yeah, I think. I definitely think with this new division system especially because we have the easier side of the division. You know, App State is on our side of the division. So uh, we may meet them in the Sun Belt Championship game, and we may, you know, lose in the Sun Belt Championship game, but we may make it there. I sound really pessimistic right <laughs> now. I'm usually the optimistic person. I'm the one who called, you know, Baker Mayfield in to lead the Browns to the AFC That's Championship true. game. So I don't know where this is coming from. Uh, but we're going to open this up a little bit um, outside of A-State. Well, we're going to stick with just regular college football. I'm not going to go off on the University of Arkansas this week. I'm not going to give them any more attention unless we talk about how they lost to Texas A&M. Uh, but Alex, give me a team that is really having your like you really have your eye on. Because I always find I, feel, I always feel like every year I have a team that I just completely fall in love with. Uh, it's usually the Oklahoma Sooners. Okay. So sure, yeah. yes, but okay. What about you? Uh, for me, uh, it's going to be another team in the Big 12, and it's okay. West Virginia, uh, a team that I really really like this year. Just this past week, uh, beat Texas Tech. Uh, on the road in Lubbock, I think it's 42-34. It's a big shootout there. They've got a solid Heisman contender in their quarterback in Will Greer. I think I, I think probably one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. I know he's going up against uh, Tua Tagovailoa at Alabama, Kyler Murray at Oklahoma, uh, but they just cracked the top ten at number nine in the country, and I don't see any team in the Big 12 uh, that could beat them until they face off against Oklahoma uh, in the season finale. So that will be the last game of the season, and that game would be at West Virginia. And so – uh, if Oklahoma keeps rolling the way they have been and West Virginia keeps rolling the way they have been, uh, you could see uh, uh, two one-loss teams or maybe undefeated teams going at it and then might even have a rematch uh, in the Big 12 championship game. So I'm really excited to see how they continue going forward. Uh, their defense is nothing special, uh, but their offense is extremely special, and that's enough to get them um, pretty far in that conference, especially with the Big 12 not necessarily being known for their defense. 
Exactly. And I, I like how you point out how, you know, Big 12 is kind of like a lot like the Sun Belt. It's a shootout kind of conference, you know. Um, but where the problems may lie is when you face teams like from the SEC. Like, that's, I feel like, you know, Big 12, they're a really fun conference to watch. Um, it's that, like, during when they're playing each other. But when they, it feels like they hit a brick wall every time they make the playoff. And so, talking about a championship caliber team, I mean, you can obviously say Alabama. You know, you can say stuff like, you can say Georgia. Because SEC, you know, as much as I hate to admit it, they are the dominant conference. Um, is there a college team that you really like right now? I really, even though we played Alabama, and, that's, and that was one of our big rivals this year, I actually do enjoy watching Alabama, and I think they have a great defense better than, well, I think they just have a great defense, and it's important to watch other teams' defense and for Arkansas State to watch them as well and to learn from that team. And I think it's just really interesting watching other teams. Yeah, and, yeah, if we could have something even close yeah. to their defense, that'd be great. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and, I, you know, I said Oklahoma. I love Oklahoma. But – and I'm, I'm a hater of the ACC, but the Clemson Tigers with that resilience that they showed this past week, I believe, it was like in coming back and beating Syracuse, which is a very strong team, which should have upset them. Should have happened, but Clemson, seeing their resilience, I, I'm a big fan of Coach Sweeney. Yeah. Um, he's a great guy, definitely a great coach. Be probably, can't, probably can't get a better coach with him, honestly. Uh, so uh, that's a good talk. Um, so who do you think is winning the championship? Sun Belt Championship? Uh, no. Oh. Overall? Just overall. Oh, it's got to be Alabama. Alabama? Absolutely. Sam? I'd have to say Alabama, too. Yeah. Sadly, I'd have to say Alabama. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I talk. I hate talking about, you know, comp or just leagues where there's an obvious champion, but I think it is Alabama. But, you know, college football is always fun to watch. You never know what may happen, um, and it changes week by week. And so that's all the time we have for this segment. Uh, join us next where we talk about professional sports around the nation. Hi, I'm Peter. And there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. Is your family in need of more quality time together? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. Nature is best enjoyed together. So bring the whole family to discover all the bonding and stress-reducing benefits parks and forests have to offer. Visit discovertheforest.org and trade in phone time for family time. Birds, squirrels, chipmunks, grass, worms, bugs, trees, rocks, and other objects in nature cannot talk. If you'd like to have a conversation while visiting nature, you will need to bring humans along. We strongly recommend starting with your family. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watcha. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? And now she's like, yes! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back to the Red Wolf Roundtable as we go into our last segment where we talk about professional sports around the world. And it's exciting times for baseball fans because it's playoff time. And now hot takes, we're, got, we're not going to have as much time for hot takes as this time. And this week's hot take will be more about discussing last week's hot take. <laughs> there we go. Um, and we're going to talk about Michael Buck. Uh, <laughs> you know, he, he put a, like, I feel like he and I, we, we put out brave hot takes last week. And, uh, well, his is already gone in the wind um, because the St. Louis Cardinals, they did not make the playoffs. Uh, he put his faith to win the World Series in a second, the, the team that was fighting for the second wild card in Detroit. But the te two teams that did get that wild card played last night, and it was the Colorado Rockies who beat the Chicago Cubs 2-1. Um, to one. And so the Rockies are going on to play the Brewers, I believe, in the NLDS. And so let's, let's talk about that game because – I think it was, uh, I was following ESPN statistics, and they said, I think in the 113 like elimination games um, for winner-take-all games, it's the first one that went 13 innings. And so I'll, I'll, I'll go to you first, Bailey. When you're playing a game, or even just watching a game, it's like when it goes 13 innings, how do you keep your head on straight? For me personally, when I'm watching a game like that, I, I honestly lose focus, and I'm like, well, at this point, like the team that is taking the lead is obviously going to win. But it's just crazy to have that many innings and 
just try and just still keep your focus on the game. Yeah, and I when the Rockies took the lead two one in the thir the top of the thirteenth, I was like, well, you know what? I feel like the Cubs can tie it and force it to the fourteenth, maybe fifteenth. Um, that would have been funny to see, um, but it didn't happen. The Rockies are moving through, um, which is a team we haven't really seen in the playoff picture in recent years, um, which is uh, pretty fun to see these new faces, especially with the Brewers. I mean, they have my last yeah, name, so, you that. know, yep. you knew I was going <laughs> to say biased. that. Yeah, a little biased. I'm a Mets fan personally, and they, I think they were eliminated from playoff contention like a month or so ago. So a while they, back. Yeah, yeah they, they, they weren't making it. Um, but it, I'll ask you, um, so the Cardinals, you know, Michael's hot take didn't make it. But maybe you have like a mini hot take. Like who do you think in the MLB can win the championship? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people, the heavy favorite right now is well, someone like the Dodgers or the Red Sox, who I think came out with the best record in baseball, uh, over 100 wins, which is always impressive. Uh, but a team that I really like uh, this year is the Oakland Athletics. Okay. And they're facing off in the wild card uh, game tonight against the Yankees. I think that game's going to be played in New York. Uh, but I think they have enough power to, to go on the road and beat the Yankees, and then I think they'd end up having to play the Red Sox there. And the Red Sox uh, have a tendency – uh, to choke in yeah. the MLB postseason. Mm -hmm. they, uh, I know they won the World Series a couple years ago, but they tend to choke in these big games and these big series. Uh, and the Athletics have just slowly been working their way up. I think in the uh, AL West it was, or somewhere around there. Uh, and uh, th they've been a very quiet team. And there, there's not a team in, on that side of the bracket that I think they can lose to. I think they can beat every team there. Red Sox, Astros, Indians, any of those guys, I think they can take care of business. So that's kind of my hot take, that they have uh, enough, enough star power, enough great management to get to the World Series. I definitely agree. I think that is a hot take. You know, every time you have a wild card team making it through, um, it's just the best of one system. Like, I, I wish they'd make it best of three, just because that best of one is just so unreliable. You don't know you're going to get the best that. team through. Um, but we're going to move on from MLB into a team that's not even really close to playoffs, but I talked about with the Browns last week, you know, winning the AFC Championship game. Maybe it was a little bit too much on the Baker train, considering they lost this past week. We're just, let's talk NFL. And we're going to talk specifically right now about two guys who, if you have them on your fantasy team, which you probably don't, especially for the second guy, that you would have scored a lot of points. So two guys, Jared Goff and Mitch Trubisky, the two quarterbacks um, play for the L.A. Rams and the Chicago Bears, respectively. And, ooh, did they go off. Uh, Goff, he had 465 yards and five touchdowns versus Minnesota. And Trubisky had 354 yards and six touchdowns versus Tampa Bay. And so I feel... You know, the numbers for Trubisky do look a little bit better, especially, like, you know, with the extra touchdown. But I, I think the – and I, most experts give Goff the player of the – like, the player of the week, and I agree, um, because he – Minnesota Vikings, they're, they're a team where we, their defense are stout. Like, and that exactly. that game was a shootout. And so – Okay, just what do you, what do you think? Did did, did uh, golf impress you more than Trubisky? I, I yeah, so Trubisky definitely impressed me, and I think what they're doing over in Chicago right now is extremely impressive. You've got uh, Mark Helfrich. I don't he's not they don't pay a lot of attention to him, but he's the new offensive coordinator for the Bears, former head coach at Oregon. And at Oregon, he coached Marcus Mariota, who's doing well at the Titans. So, uh, what he's done to this Bears offense, transforming their offense and making Trubisky one of the better quarterbacks in that division, uh, I think is phenomenal. But golf. Like you mentioned, going up against a much better defense mm -hmm. against the Vikings, that's just more impressive to me. Tampa Bay, it, they, 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 do, they were doing okay, but they don't have the best defense compared to someone like the Vikings who have been struggling as of late, one, two, and one right now. So that's kind of disappointing for them, uh, especially with uh, adding Kirk Cousins in there, which he also had a game. Uh, it was a great quarterback battle between him and Goff, but Goff definitely deserves the edge over Trubisky when you're comparing those stats uh, just because of the level of competition he's going up against. Yeah, I agree. And I think the LA Rams are a team that if you look for a dominant team in the NFL or like an early favorite, to win, I believe they're leading betting you know, odds. Like they are the odds-on favorites to win the Super Bowl already this year, and it's far away. Um, but I'll ask you, Bailey, um, out of the list of teams, both NFC and AFC, who are the teams that you would peg as the dominant teams and that you would expect to run through to the Super Bowl? Any idea? Hmm. No? <laughs> I, I like how you say that because <laughs> that confirms my point last week of how I don't think there's a dominant team. I mean, usually, you know, you think the Patriots are going to, you know, just take everything. But they've lost to Jacksonville, you know, um, and they, they've lost games. And then they, they were at a 1-2 record. Now they're 2-2 two two because they just slaughtered the Dolphins. Dolphins yeah. Thanks for the zero points also, Ryan Tannehill. I appreciated that. Um, but, yeah, so – I think it's really fun to watch, um, and I think your point adds more than you might think it ha did. Because well, I just feel like it's really hard to tell at this point. Yeah, mean. true. I mean, we, we know, like, in Chicago might be um, – it's just there's so much talent at the top, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of teams that can win it. But that's all the time we have for this week's Red Oak Roundtable. Thanks for joining the discussion. Follow us on Twitter at RWRT Official, and that's all we have. Join us next week.